I'd like now to turn to Yana Spess of Ironwood Pharmaceuticals. For those of you who don't know Yana, uh, she and I worked together on uh, the cover feature of this year's Life Science Leader CMO Awards magazine uh, supplement. That's a great article if anyone uh, can get a hold of that to read. Yana's uh, uh, multi-talented, so to speak, a lot of experience. She has uh, a few things a little bit different than what we're talking about now, but a few very interesting things on her mind uh, that kind of uh, bring us through this COVID-19 environment and uh, this virtual uh, experience uh, somewhat like what we're having right now. So let me turn it over to you, Yana, for a little bit. Thank you, Louis. So uh, just to restate for the audience, uh, is the question that we are now addressing the future supplier relationship management best practice and how we envision that going into the next decade? You still there, Yana? Yes. Yeah, uh, and we said we're just clarifying the, for the audience is the question the supply relationship management best practice mm -hmm. in the next decade. Yep, we uh, yeah, we do. Uh, okay, I don't I don't see a, a question here, but you can continue. Yeah, hey, it's the first one of the submitted ones, Louis. Yeah. Uh, Okay, so as, uh, as someone who represents a small virtual development company, and, and you can find many of them in the uh, Boston area where I am based or on the West Coast or in other parts of the US, companies that have a virtual development model, meaning that we do not have any in-house labs, we do not have any in-house manufacturing, uh, we are really uh, depending on the CDMOs and uh, are very uh, interested in making the, the relationship and the ways we work together going forward uh, the more efficient and effective. So what I would say uh, I see happening is what I would call technology-aided transparency. We are transitioning to a world where the travel is uh, limited and unlikely it will come back to us to the same levels as uh, prior to 2020. So we are continuing relationships and we are starting relationship with CDMOs that we never met face to face. And uh, pretty much everyone must have an experience that the relationship aspect of large contracts and pharmaceutical development are quite important. The, the development always has twists and turns and challenges. So uh, building these relationships without face-to-face -face interaction, I think it's going to be interesting challenge. And we are starting to build some models uh, relying heavily on technology. For example, leading by example using uh, vir uh, video conferencing. So oftentimes it's us, small company that uh, encourages large CDMOs, please use your cameras, get on the video, make sure that we all can see each other and at least form the relationship this way. Uh, we're going to be using a lot more virtual reality in lieu of actually traveling to the sites and seeing our processes and see how our product is being made. We are switching our steering committees also to, to the, with the aid of the technology. Um, so they can becoming virtual steering uh, committees. And we will be relying a lot more on um, common agreements and understanding 
for the business continuity rules. Yeah, let me uh, let me interject, Yana, because that's that's extremely interesting. So, um, literally, because we can't go and meet each other uh, with social distancing at the moment, you are quote unquote screening. Uh, CDMOs via a computer screen, so to speak. Um, and so is is your whole company putting in uh, a certain uh, platform or protocols, uh, you know, with a, a world where until four or five months ago it was, oh, my goodness, you have to be face-to-face. -face. You have to go and do a physical audit. You have to meet uh, with your CDMO occasionally. And... Uh, and now you're doing all that by a, a virtual mechanism. Maybe talk a little bit more. Is, has your company decided we, we need a whole other system, or how are you approaching that then? It's uh, so a very good point uh, in terms of the new systems. We do not have those new systems, but we are being asked to build them. Uh, actually, SRM being in a small company is one of my objectives for 2020. And first thing my boss boss asked me was, well, make it relevant to today's reality and what's expected in the future. So I'm sure a lot of the systems will be relooked at, and it may be a different process in the small companies and different process in the large pharma. Um, what you know, what uh, I I can highlight is that the, the expertise that. Uh, all of us have and the experience in the industry becomes even more important because you have to be able to evaluate your future supplier based on the PowerPoint presentation they send you and and uh, schematics of the equipment and the floor plans and the, the capability of the equipment and their org charts and you have to be able to make an assessment whether their technical expertise is adequate and you will enter into the negotiations of the term and uh, work towards the contract. So I think what, you know, the capital that we all built and what we learn will become even more critical. Very good, very good. And, and I, I wonder um, what's your thoughts about uh, even after we get through this uh, virus uh, pandemic uh, you might continue, and the future might see us do more virtual uh, contacting and uh, uh, maybe even contracting. Or do you think we'll just go back to, okay, we have to do face-to-face, -face, we have to do physical audits? Well, I think we are all seeing that a lot of the technology that is at our disposal is uh, very useful, and uh, the what was going to happen perhaps five years from now is being expedited and uh, we are uh, uh, becoming a lot more comfortable and capable working remotely and being productive and efficient remotely. Uh, personally, I do not expect to go back to the same levels that we have to have face-to-face -face meeting so frequently. I, I believe that a lot of the, the new ways of working that we are putting in place and are turning to be effective will stay with us. Right, right. Have you found that any of your current CDMOs uh, are able to operate as uh, well as you'd like them to during this current situation when you can't go and meet them or talk to them as much as you'd like? I, I have, a, uh, in net, current network, I have worked with the CDMOs that are, that are adapted uh, exceptionally well. Um, and they employ a mix of uh, working from home for the office functions and some distancing in the lab, uh, and new ways of working in the laboratories. And none of our projects actually suffered uh, any delay or or any gaps so i think it uh, depends on uh, of course on the company from company to the company uh, however it's uh, it's in the business model of the cdmos to be adaptable and to work the best what the customer needs and many of them seem they are demonstrating that they can do it quite seamlessly 
Good. That's very good. That's that's good to hear for the entire industry 